What is up you guys? Welcome to another lecture on optimization algorithms where the goal is very clear. Given a function f of x, find a point x that minimizes f of x. In this one, I will show you what Damp-Newton method is and how to use it when combined with the Armeo backtracking line search algorithm. We will approach both methods from intuitive and animated perspectives. But not just that, I will also show you how to implement and animate those algorithms on Python. The following video was recorded on NVIDIA's Jetson Oren supercomputer in Abu Dhabi, the UAE, and under a Creative Commons license. I'm Ahmed Bazzi signing in on this one. First, let's talk about damped Newton's method and why it works. So given an initializer x0, we pick a direction dk satisfying the following linear equation. Like Newton's method, we use curvature information, that is, information relying on the Hessian so as to take a directed route. Let me show you why we are using dk direction towards the negative of the gradient. Damp Newton, just like Newton's method, makes a local quadratic approximation of the function based on information from the current point, and then jumps to the minimum of that approximation. Just imagine fitting a little quadratic surface in higher dimensions to your surface at the current point, and then going to the minimum of the approximation to find the next point. Finding the direction towards the minimum of the quadratic approximation is what you are doing. As a matter of fact, this animation shows you why, in certain cases, Newton's method can converge to a saddle or a maximum. This all depends on the eigenvalues of the Hessian. If the eigenvalues of the Hessian are non-positive or even a combination of positive and negative eigenvalues, in those cases, the local quadratic approximation is an upside-down paraboloid. The Damp-Newton method damps the derivative by a damping factor, sk, where sk is between 0 and 1. Otherwise, it's not damping anymore, it's amplifying. Usually, this sk is obtained by a line search, like exact line search, Armeo, backtracking, Wolf criterion, and many more. Finally, we walk in the damp direction. Note that if sk equal to 1, then we are doing a classical Newton step, right? And we stop according to a stopping criterion, like maximum number of iterations, proximity of xk plus 1 relative to xk, or how small the gradient at sk plus 1 gets. Next, let's talk about the line search we are going to use in this tutorial, which is the Armeo backtracking method. Instead of doing exact line search to find the exact alpha that solves the update equation given x and p, we take a computationally better approach. I remind you that the x is the point we are standing at, so at iteration k, this is xk, and p is the direction we want to take. The alpha tells us how far we go in that direction. So if alpha is 0, we stay where we are currently at. And if alpha is 1, we take a step of p and so on. This is achieved by the Armeo condition, which sufficiently decreases our function. Of course, looking at this condition as is might not reveal any insights, but geometrically looks very beautiful. Let me show you how. So the x-axis represents alpha, and the white curve is the function fxk plus alpha pk. Namely, the lower bound in the Armeo condition, and the blue dashed straight line is a linear function in alpha which is the upper bound in the Armeo condition. 
Now analyzing the condition, we require that the white curve be below the straight line. So this region, the green one, not the red region, and this other green region. If we start by a certain alpha, say alpha 1, then a small step might do the job if it falls inside this green region. However, a large step, which depends on the step size taken, might drift alpha 2 to be in the red region, hence an increase in the cost, which is basically the opposite of what we need, right? Therefore, our meal tells us to proceed to alpha 3 as such, where we are close to a local minimum instead of the global one. This condition ensures that the computed step length can sufficiently decrease the objective function f of xk. Only using this condition, however, it cannot be guaranteed that xk will converge in a reasonable number of iterations. Since our meal condition is always satisfied with the step length being small enough. And that's why in the next lecture I will show you the second condition that works well when paired up with our Mio's condition, which is known as the Wolf condition, and relies on curvature information. Perfect! Now let's implement what we have demonstrated on Python. First, let's import some packages that we will be using along the way, like NumPy and SymPy. Then we define an independent function for our line search. For that, we declare a function called our meal, which basically takes in the gradient function evaluated at the current xk, the direction dk, the p, which is the alpha we showed in the explanation, and the sigma, which is the raw parameter we showed in the explanation. We simply test the condition and if it is satisfied, we return true, else we return false. Then we implement our modified damp Newton method. Our function will take in the function f of x, gradient, hessian, and an initializer x0. The function I am about to show you is a 2D function. Hence, we have two variables, x0 and x1. Next, we define the maximum number of iterations to be 500. 500. Let's also define our raw to be something less than 1, say 0 0.55. The sigma as well, fix it to 0 0.4 and initialize our k to be 0. k will be the number of iterations. Set a very small epsilon to define when to stop taking steps. We will see how in a bit. So this while loop defines the maximum number of iterations and within I will compute the current gradient and hessian. Next, I will solve the equation hk dk is equal to minus gk to find the direction to take. Next, if the direction to take is very small in L2 norm, then it is not worth to continue iterating or walking as the step size to take becomes less than 10 to power minus 5 in the L2 norm sense. Let's define m and mk to be 0. Then do a line search. We 
we keep shrinking our rho by multiplying it with itself or doing rho power m for the mth iteration of the line search until the line search condition is satisfied. Then we break and update our f0 to the next value where we step an amount of rho power m times the direction dk. We increment k to say that we are going to the next iteration. So that's it for the main loop and what comes after is really just some printing to show the value we have converged to and to print the value of the function at the converged point as well as the number of iterations that we took. First, let us define counter variables for the number of times we called our function, gradient, and hessian. It is important to benchmark the number of computations done for any given algorithm. I won't display them here, but it's good if you want to run some computational analysis. Next, let's define our variable through SymPy's index space method. Then, let's define the number of variables n equal to 2, followed by the function fx0, x1. It is clear that this function is minimized at x0 equal to x1 equal to 1. Then we compute our gradient and Hessian expressions with the help of SymPy's diff function, which simply performs a derivative. Next, let's generate the function, gradient, and Hessian's Python numerical calculation function using NumPy and with the help of SymPy's LambdaPy function. Then we define the functions as function handles, where fun represents f of x. This is only done to count the number of times we call f of x. For the same reason, I will create a function handle for the gradient and the hessian.
Last, but definitely not least, I will call my function to test how it performs for different initializations. First, let's create a folder called Animate Iterations. And within this folder, a script called func.py, which contains all my Python animation functions. I will start by importing NumPy. I will create two methods for animating in 2D and 3D. I will start by Animate 3D, where I will plot f of x on a 3D axis and show the point xk per iteration in 3D. I will also mark the path taken. The inputs to animate 3D are the function f of x, the axis extreme values of x0 and x1 axis, as well as the x0, x1 and f of x values taken per iteration. I will import some modules in this function like pyplot from matplotlib, axis3d from mpl underscore toolkits, and animation from matplotlib. Let's create a mesh grid based on the extreme values inputted. The mesh grid will contain 100 by 100 points. Then we evaluate per xy value, the z value, which is fx0, x1, and then reshape accordingly. Then initialize a 7x7 seven seven figure and instantiate a 3D axis using axis 3D. Then let's plot z versus xy using the following design parameters.
set the x-axis as x0, the y as x1, and the z as fx0, x1. If you're wondering why I have the dollar signs surrounded by the variables, it's because I want to render the symbols as LaTeX expressions. Next, let's rotate the 3D plot to the following view angle. Next, we create the animation where the path then is colored in purple. And the point representing XK is animated as a purple star. Next, we use the following parameters for font sizes of our text. Then we define a callback function init underscore two to initialize our animations where the line and point properties are empty. The text is also set to empty. Following init underscore two, we have another callback function, which is animate underscore two, that takes the iteration number i as input and sets the current value of x0, x1, and f to plot the line and set the point. Optionally, you can have a legend.
And before we wrap up this function, we need to generate our animation using animation.func animation. We pass it the current figure and the callback functions animate underscore two and init underscore two. We also set the following parameters like number of frames, which is clearly the length of x0 underscore vowels or x underscore vowels since each value represents a frame in our animation. Before closing the function, we show the plot. Then we go to animate 2D, where I will plot f of x on a contour plot and show the point xk per iteration in 2D. The inputs to animate 2D are the function f of x, the axis extreme values of x0 and x1 axis, as well as the x0 and x1 values taken per iteration. I will import some modules in this function like pyplot from matplotlib and animation from matplotlib. So axis 3D is not needed. Like we did with Animate3D, let's create a mesh grid based on the extreme values inputted. The mesh grid will contain 100 by 100 points. Then we evaluate per xy value the z value, which is fx0, x1, and then we shape accordingly. Then initialize a 7x7 seven seven figure and plot the data we have using a contour plot. Next, we create the animation where the path then is colored in purple and the point representing xk is animated as a purple star. Next, we use the following parameters for font sizes of our text. Then, we define a callback function in it underscore one to initialize our animations where the line and point properties are empty. The text is also set to empty.
Following init underscore one, we have another callback function, which is animate underscore one, that takes the iteration number i as input and sets the current data of x0 and x1 to plot the line and set the point. We now add a legend, if you want. And before we wrap up this function, we need to generate our animation using animation.funk animation. We pass it the current figure and the callback functions, animate underscore one and init underscore one. We also set the following parameters like number of frames, which is clearly the length of x0 underscore vowels or x underscore vowels, since each value represents a frame in our animation. Before closing the function, we show the plot. Now, after we're done with our animate iterations module, we import it as follows. We start by creating storing variables for x0, x1, and f of x0, x1. The example I am about to show you is a 2D function. Hence, we have two variables, x0 and x1. So I will store all my variables in x0 underscore val and x1 underscore val and the evaluated function in f underscore val, which is basically f evaluated at x0 and x1. I will then append the current value I have where the first value of x0 is stored in x0 underscore vals and the second value of x0 is stored in x1 underscore vals and the function in f underscore vowels. I will now append the current values of x0, x1, and f of x0, x1 at iteration k. Finally, we will return all the stored values. Next, we define the extreme values of the x0 and x1 axes. We start testing the animate 2D where the initializer is at the origin. Look at how the point smoothly converges towards the global minimum, which is 0.11. Let's take a look at the convergence in 3D. And that's about it. If you enjoyed the video or found anything useful, you can support me by liking my video and subscribing to my channel. If you have questions, kindly leave them down in the comment section below and I'll get to them as soon as possible. I am very grateful for all the support I received over the years, so thank you so much. I'll see you then.